Don't Carry on. I'm not allowed to promote a demonstration, attend a demonstration. You're not organising a demonstration. This isn't a demonstration, right? This is no. a, a jolly for St George's Day. It has to be. Why is it important? Why, Why now? Important? I think it's important because every other identity and every other culture are allowed to celebrate and encouraged to celebrate who they are. Do you know what? I've always had, do you know that clown McGovern? I've always grown up. Whenever it was St George's Day, I made sure we took the day off, made sure all the lads took the day off. And we all went out. And Luton used to be great for St George's Day. It used to be amazing, yeah? I mean, hundreds and hundreds of us would be out together for St George's Day. That slowly has eroded and disappeared anyway in the t in the town of Luton. And I used to say to the lads, when it comes to St Patrick's Day, you're all taking the day off to go out for St Patrick's Day. What's going on? <clears throat> no, one's going out for pa no one's going out for St George's Day. But it's important. I think people are feeling now more than ever that our identity, certainly of England, is under attack. And people want... I noticed when I left Luton as well that all the surrounding villages and surrounding small towns around it really focus on their identity. There's Morris dancers on on Boxing Day in the village. Yes. Where my is, yeah, everyone then concentrating and allowed to concentrate and focusing on on their own identity. And St George's Day has always been about that. It always has for me. Growing up in Luton, we've always gone out. We've always celebrated it. Um, it's the same faces, but I hope there's big numbers going out. I know people yeah. are talking about heading to London for this. I'm in yeah. court that day. I mean, quarter not, the what's the chances of that being thrown out or winning that? What, what what will that do if that happens? So no matter what, like if you this is planned for St George's Day. So I, I had already told people who were asking me, we want to come and support your court case. And you, if you're in trial, I just said, well, don't don't really bother coming on the 22nd, come on the 23rd, because I'm in for two day trial. My result will be on the 23rd. But there is a chance that this could get kicked out on the 22nd. If it does get kicked down on the 22nd, no matter what, I'll be in London on St George's Day on the 23rd, no matter what. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm not yeah. really planning a demonstration, just plan a celebration. And uh, hopefully I'll be celebrating my embarrassment and humiliation of the Metropolitan Police Force. Well, the stage is set. We spoke, we sorted the stage out. We sorted the sound system out. We're going to have St George's flags all around the, uh, the, 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 the uh, stage. Patriotic songs in the day, loads of flags. No, let, let, can we just get down to a little bit as to why I felt like I needed to come back and try and organise a celebration in London? What we've been seeing in London over recent in recent weeks, recent months, the difference in what, what's happening now to what happened, say, 10, 15 years ago, what direction is England going in at the moment? Where do you see it being in the next 10 years? I think, Mo, do you know what? I had an interview today. Do you know the lad who's ho holding up Nyack, the lad who's holding up the sign saying Hamas are terrorists. I met him today to interview him for my documentary Lawfare. And what he said, he said in 1979, for the Islamic Revolution in Iran. Yeah, so Iran was a liberal country. Iran had yeah. girls could wear mini skirts, they could go in bikinis, they, they lived a good life, they had good education, good universities. It was, it, lots of people go there on holiday. And then the black block and the left and, and the red block. The red bloc was the Marxists and the communists, yeah, the far left. The black bloc was the jihadists and the Islamists. They joined together and they joined together for the common cause of overthrowing the Shah and overthrowing the Wolf, overthrowing and taking over the country. And he said, what I saw in the build up to what, what happened in my country is what's happening here. He said, the far left, the, the communists, the Marxists, the extremists, are aligned and they're demonstrating for Palestine, for Hamas, with all the radicals. They've all joined together and it's like a loose, like, like an alliance. They hate each other, really, but they're using each other. Now, what happened when the Islamists took over control in Iran the next day was they massacred, murdered and butchered all the left who helped them get there. Yeah? Wow. And then since then, automatically, people, if you look at 1979, before the Islamic Revolution, there's videos of massive, massive halls of people and comedians joking about the Iranian population being forced to wear the hijab because it was a joke. The thought that people would be forced to wear the hijab was insane to the Iranian po population who lived freely. And then bang, they lost everything. And since that point, they've been enslaved. They're still fighting for their freedom now. They're being butchered now. There's been an attempted revolution for the last three, four years. Not ones that our feminists in this country are supporting, but the real feminists are the women there. So when you look at what's happened there, he gave the warnings. I said, what, what message would you give to the British public? And he said that it, we only wished in Iran at that time, there was people who were coming out in support of freedom on the streets, in support of democracy. Yeah, But there wasn't. Right? It was left to the far left and the Islamists who took over. 
And right now, looking at this country, you are the people who are supporting and going against it. And the public should be supporting you. He goes, because if they don't support them, you may lose your freedom like we lost ours. You may see your country change. And let's face it, London's changed. London's gone. You know, like when we hear, we, so people understand, we, we heard recently that uh, Lee Anderson come out and say, and say that uh, London's been handed over to Islamists. Yeah, the, the Metropolitan Police Force has surrendered and given the streets to the Islamists. I'm looking currently at this documentary I'm making. In, in 2011, in 2011, I had a planned charity walk through London, one spot to another, across the whole of London for a young girl who was dying of cancer. The day before, Scotland Yard come and visit me in Luton. They sat me down and they said, Stephen, um, we need you to not go through Tower Hamlets. So I said, get me out of map. I got out of map, going from A to B, walking direct, takes me straight through Tower Hamlets. So I said, why, don't, why do you need me not to? Well, the Imam of the East London Mosque has warned us there will be consequences if you're allowed to walk through Tower Hamlets tomorrow publicly. Yeah? So I said, I don't give a fuck what the Imam says, if I'm honest. I don't care. Yeah? He can, whatever he's saying, I don't give a shit. I'm going to walk from A to B. And they said, well, I said, what's the exact problem here? Well, if you walk through Tower Hamlets, you'll be walking past mosques. I said, we're in Luton. There's 45 of them surrounding us. Yeah? I walk past mosques all the time. What's the problem? Yeah? And there's this the East London Mosque. I said, okay. Well, I'm going to go from A to B, lads. Yeah? I'm walking from A to B tomorrow. So I don't care, and you shouldn't care what the imam says. You should uphold the law, and I'm going to do my charity walk. Now, on this video, when I do my charity walk, what happens is I get to Allgate East, and I get to the board of Tower Hamlets. Right? They let two undercover officers, which are clearly officers, yeah. and they attack us. Yeah, I see it. Then they let them walk off. Then they arrest us. Now, when I was arrested, even though I'd done nothing, yeah, the media edited the footage to hold. So the media had the footage of us getting attacked, but they paused it and pumped it to the whole country, saying EDO leader in violent fracas. And, and they had us like this. Where are we moving back when someone's trying to hit us? They had our hands like this in a still photo rather than using a video that showed our innocence. Yeah? So the media played a part as propaganda. Now, this was 2011. So the police actively done an undercover operation to fabricate a case to arrest us on the border of Tower Hamlets because they were terrified of the Muslim community and letting us walk through. Yeah? Mm. That's insane. That does, that remind you, does that remind you of the Jewish, the, the, uh, the Jewish day that you went to? Explain to people what you... Because people, all they saw, a lot of people, they saw is you being carted off, pepper sprayed. Apparently, it was resisting arrest. What actually happened that day? Well, it, it, that's the, the point I'm making. It's no different, yeah? It's, they, they fabricate a charge. And then when they fabricated that charge, Danny, in 2011, they gave me bail conditions for nine months. They charged me. So I get attacked, I got charged. Yeah? Cost me 15 grand for charges yeah? through the legal system. But they, they banned me for nine months because my bail conditions, like now, not to enter the Borough of Town Hamlets, not to send an email, not to do this. So they use fabricated car charges like they've done now. I'm charged with, I'm charged with um, some bullshit order they were giving me, yeah? that they said they gave me, and, and preventing to leave the, the, the area. Now I face three, three months in prison, but for the last five months, I've been banned from London. Right? which is what they wanted. Why did they want me banned from London? Because they don't want any opposition to these Hamas rallies. They want them to have free reign. They are, we don't have to worry about Sharia being enforced by Muslims. The police will enforce zones to prevent people who are critical of Islam from entering them. Doing so, nothing. God. Right now, they don't want an opposition to Hamas. They'll fabricate a charge against me. The gentleman who you saw attacked last week with a Hamas terrorist sign, they yeah. did arrest him for the sign. Then they arrested him for assault. When the video went viral showing him getting assaulted, not him assaulting anyone, th th then they released him. But I said to him, if that wasn't on video, he would have been charged like I was. Mm. He would have been given conditions not to attend demonstrations. right? Because rather than deal with the extremists, rather than deal with the terrorists, they decided to deal with members of the British public. And that, and, and that isn't just me. Yeah, There's lots of people in this country now having their rights and their freedoms taken from them for daring to speak, open their mouth, or be pro-British, or be pro-English, or be against Islam and discuss things on demonstrations on the streets. They're having their rights and freedoms taken. So I think St George's Day should be a day of celebration anyway. Yeah, It should be the one day a year where we can all celebrate who we are and have an enjoying day where you can be proud of your country. Not just proud of everything, but we've not been allowed to. People feel it's frowned upon. I hope people go like that and come out in their thousands. Or well, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of messages that I've been seeing is people saying that if they, they feel like if they hold the St. George's flag outside their house, if they walk down the road with it, people will actively say, oh, look, he's a racist. He must be a racist far right. He must be far right. We've got to a point in our, in, in our history where holding our nation's flag 
by these loony lefty gender ridden individuals is 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 somehow racist. Yeah, they've managed right. to portray it that way. They've managed what? to demonise it, and um, they've managed. They've been successful in doing it, from politicians to far left to all of them. And that's again, that's orchestrated. Like even, again, I don't know if I've given this example before. When it was St George's Day in Luton, in, when it was St George's Day in Luton, when, when, when um, Ignald High School. Ignald High School is the, girl, where the school where the girl tried to wear the full niqab and Sherry Blair, Tony Blair's wife, defended her in court. She took the school to court. Islamic radicals protest outside the school. That same school, when it comes to St George's Day, they sent a letter home to all the kids. My mate's kids went there. We, we, it was just when we started the EDL. And then they gave us a letter and it said that if anyone brings in the emblem of St George, flag, pin badge, anything, they'll be sent home and suspended from school. Yeah. So I rang the school. I said, do you mind telling me what this is about? He goes, well, they can celebrate St. George's school after school hours. I said, what sort of message do you think you're sending to the English kids at that school? Bearing in mind when Pakistan won the cricket, in the same school, when Pakistan won the cricket, Pakistan flags everywhere, the school celebrated it, Pakistan had just won a massive game, yeah? But when it comes to England's day, you're actually telling them that they should be ashamed of who they are, yeah? Whereas every other culture, every other identity, and in Luton, we have St. Lucian Day for solutions, because there's a solution population. They have a big celebration, a big fair and everything. Everyone celebrates it. Mm. St. Patrick's Day is a three-day festival. Eid has huge fairgrounds and everything like that. St. George's Day was always banned. They banned it. After the Soldiers' Homecoming Parade in 2009, we done our, they attacked our soldiers. It was only when they banned the St. George's Parade, which was about three weeks later, they banned it because of racial tensions. That's when we then started our protests, because we'd had enough. We saw hold on a minute. We're not allowed out again. We're not allowed to celebrate our day again because of racial tensions. Do you let the jihadists attack our soldiers? So I think if I've, if I've experienced that and, and that feeling of um, <coughs> oppression as such for your identity of who you are and the ability to celebrate who you are and, and, and be proud of who you are, if I've, if I've experienced that in Luton, what I realise is people experience this across the country. People are experiencing it and, and feeling it. But I think most people then, the English fence come along, and we're like that to everyone. We don't care what you say. We don't care if you call us racist. We don't give a shit. Yeah? We're proud of who we are. We're proud of our country. And I think now, um, I think most people now are awake to the lies of the media. Most people don't care what the media say. Most people aren't bothered about being called a phobe or an ist or any other shit name. But don't, you f- don't you find that a lot of what you've been saying, a lot of what you've been demonised for over the years and the reason why you've been, you know, you're in a situation where you're cancelled in pretty much every place possible. You can't get bank accounts. You can't live a normal life. Everything that you sort of said in the early days leading up to now, and, and now the politicians are starting to talk about it, the immigration. Yeah. It's its crazy that we're now at a point where the politicians and, and, and those are talking about the points that you warned them about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It would have just been good if they listened 10, 12 years ago and they'd have tried to deal with the problems then because the problems have got so much worse. The problems yeah. have expanded, the demographics have expanded, expanded the extremism has expanded. The confidence of the jihadists and their groups of it is now so high. But yeah, it's quite good. I try, I get bitter sometimes when I see people talking. Um, I, thought, I saw that Constantine starts, basically says everything. No. Like and and no. I put out a bit of a message saying, hold on a minute. I pulled up things he said about me in the past. And really, I should be happy. Really, I should be happy. Because for 10, 12 years, we've, we've been calling out the mainstream people who reach different demographics to us to start addressing these issues and talking about. When people then start, I was being, I think at times I've been a little bit of a bitch, moaning, saying, yeah, well, you said this and you said that. But in reality, the, the, it's shifted. And it's shifted nice. now yeah. from mainstream, where presenters, news presenters, even though they still demonise us, yeah, for the greater good of the cause, where we're at, it's good. It, we're in a good time. Lots of people are talking. As you said, people are now saying the things we said. Uh, yeah. And it's mainstream. And but but it's also the reason why I got frustrated is because it's now easy to say it. Yeah, it's easy. You ha- you're not getting cancelled. You're not losing your job. It's mainstream. But Home Secretary saying it. Yeah, leading uh-huh. politicians are saying it now. But yeah, I think that we, I think that we should encourage. Do you know encouraging as well? It's encouraging to see Mayor Tusi. It's encouraging to see um, Carl Benjamin. It's encouraging to see. Calvin Robinson to see the, the growth again of Katie Hopkins absolutely smashing it. How fu- how well she's doing. Elon how much nice she is. Has it's a big great, play, part great, to play in that. It's great to see Lawrence Fox. It's, mm. You couldn't name two people 10 years ago yeah, that had these ideas or these views and was willing to talk about them. You couldn't name anyone else. Yeah. So now you can name dozens. There's so many presenters. 
There's well, Patrick Christie. There's so many mainstream presenters who toe the line on certain things, but at the same time, we should applaud them and support them. And even like, yeah, it's, it's good because the open window shifted. What's acceptable to discuss has shifted. And we should celebrate anyone that's, anyone that's talking about it. And we should also support, if people are watching this, any new platforms for debate, discussion, podcasts, any new. Liam Tufts is flying again. All these new people who are not controllable are the people that need support. I said, I've just done a podcast with Mayor Tusi. It was really good, man. And I can really see him blowing up. He is blowing yeah. up anyway. But um, yeah. it's great to have citizen journalism, the voice of Wales, the lad, what the lads have done there. What about Twitter. You've got to talk about, because <laughs> in, my, in my point of view, a lot of people, you would have lost. I mean, Telegram's just gone down in terms of the apps. Those sort of things. If you hadn't have got back Twitter, God. I mean, your, God. You, your, your, your message, your, your voice, apart from the people that know where to go, is completely taken away. Just just to remind people on Twitter, you're back on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle? How can they... Because you're on there every day. I see your post all the time. Talk, tell people so they can come follow you. So you have to... So I'm still on a search ban. So it is encouraging. When I got my Twitter account back, I remember I was, I was in Spain. I was sitting in a restaurant. And I, still, I still check Twitter all the time. Yeah? That's, that's where I get my news from. So I'm still searching through Twitter. And I saw, boom, my old account. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was, I was shocked, yeah? And then I saw, <laughs> Katie Hopkins, I saw Katie Hopkins' account, yeah? So I messaged Katie saying, your account's back, our account's back. And she went, what? I said, I'm looking at our accounts, yeah? Yeah, crazy. She, she said, really? And, and so she didn't know, yeah? And then I said, but then the worst thing was, I'm looking at it, I didn't have the phone number it was linked to because I'd changed my number. I didn't have the password. So for 48 hours, I was, I, I, I did my life. I need my life to concentrate on Twitter before, yeah. yeah. Twitter was my life. Yeah? So I'm like, I'm like, I've got all these things I want to say. I'm looking at my account. It's trending. It's in the news, and I can't say shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get back in it. And then, I, and then I sent a message to someone close to Elon Musk, who I knew was close to Elon Musk, just saying, "What's going on?" And then Elon Musk commented on a comment. Yeah. So I thought this isn't a mistake. Elon, <laughs> Elon Musk has given us back the account. It's actually him. Yeah. Yeah. So he's actually made the confirmation that we're having our accounts back. So then I messaged Katie Hopkins saying we're back, yeah? And then I saw her post on hers. And then I made, said, the lad message said, send me your new email. So I sent him a new email. And bang, I just received an email from Twitter saying, click this to verify your account. Whack, I was back. And then I went back. And then I got, I see you must talk about the importance of citizen journalism. And, and citizen journalism is the future of the media. It's the future of challenging the media anyway. It's the future Absolutely. of challenging the narrative and the government. That's what it is. And it's important. But then he search ban me, which maybe Matt, maybe the justification to give me back a platform mm. was to make it that people couldn't find me. So if you go on now Twitter and you type in Tommy Robinson, you can't find my account. It's pretty frustrating. You have to put in at T Robinson New Era. Click that. It will bring you up my posts. I am active on there every day. Telegram. You know what I find mad, which I'm laughing about? I'm sitting there on an iPhone, yeah? iPhone, one of the biggest companies in the world, have made a decision at some point, their executives have sat around a table, yeah, which is what I think is fucking mental. Yeah, They've sat around a table and said, right, we need to stop Tommy Robinson News, yeah? <laughs> which is fucking mad. Because <laughs> they've been actively sought together to, to block. Telegram I haven't cancelled my channel, but iPhone have made it, that if you own an iPhone, you can't access my channel. So I think, Jesus, that's iPhone. So what, you can access other channels, just not yours. Yeah, you can't access mine. So mine is... Other channels. You yeah, can you can access other channels. Yeah, Telegram, you can go on all the other channels. You just can't access, access Tommy Robinson News. It's got a block on it from oh, Android wow. and iPhone at the same time. So it's wow. like, yes. I find it as a compliment. It's a massive compliment that the biggest corporations yeah. in the world are trying to sit around tables to work out how can we shut him up. But and why do you think that is, yet? Because yeah. Because I, I remember... I remember the day that you, when I first watched you, you went live on Facebook, and I think you had 23,000 people on a live stream within three, four, five minutes. Like that. Any politician would dream of that, and you had that. That's why That's why they, they you were more powerful than any politician in the country. And if you hadn't have lost that, I do think we would have seen, what is the future for Tommy Robinson? Where are you, where are you going? What do you want to do? I'm going to get a kebab. I'm going to get a kebab. <laughs> I'm going to get you up for kebab, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. nah, I, um, I think that at that point, we were we bypassed their propaganda. We went yeah. past the headlines. They were so used to lying about people. and we, we reached people sitting in their lounge via their phone. And we started challenging their thoughts and making them think and 
making them change their opinions, and it was great, yeah? And then we've got back to that stage now, and I do like to poke the bear a bit, yeah, as well. So I've I, sort of, I think we've all noticed. But, but I keep saying Mark Rowley. Mark Rowley's the head of the Met Police, yeah? And I keep saying, <laughs> fuck you, Mark Rowley, basically. I don't care about your ban. I don't care, right? I'm making a documentary now that's going to humiliate Mark Rowley more than he could, ever, he could ever think of. It's going to be his worst nightmare, yeah? And I'm going to run a campaign for him to resign because that's what he needs to do. He is single-handedly, and I think the film I put together will prove it, he has lost, the, the Metropolitan Police Force have lost the, lost the respect of the world. They used to be the envy of the world, the best police force to set an example in the entire world. Now they're an absolute laughing stock because they're yeah. scared cowards when it comes to dealing with jihadists and they've got iron fists when it comes to dealing with nationalists and patriots. So I'm going to prove that. I'm going to, and I think that at times the BBC, I embarrassed them, I embarrassed the government. Uh, Panadrama ruined John Sweeney. It ruined their flagship program. You know, one yes. and a half. I looked at the figures because I'm researching it for this documentary. At the end of Panora Panadrama, I said, right, if you want to do something, cancel your BBC license fee. One and a half million people that year cancelled their BBC license. Oh, no. fee. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way to get to them. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's, there's only certain things you can do. Those are the certain things you can do. Another thing you can do because of everything that's going on is turn up on the 23rd of April. I mean, we hope. So we're hoping to see you there. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'm at, I am at court. I'll let you know at court. I'm at Central Central Westminster Court, I think, um, in the Square Mile. So I'm at court. But again, so people understand, I am on trial, yeah? But I'm putting the judiciary on trial. I filmed a documentary behind the scenes of this entire case, yeah? Not just the case, but how they operate, the way they operate, the lies. I've got them lying, yeah? Mm. I've got them lying, right? Totally lying, not just on my case, but on multiple cases, so, so that people understand. Because there'll be some people watching this who may think we have freedom of speech and freedom of assembly and freedom of the press. You will not think that by the end of this film. And I will use multiple other examples of lies and proof. Everything I will provide is, is proof and evidence of videos of, uh, of covert recording to prove all of these things. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to oh, your docu Let's put this quickly. Your documentary is just alone on my channel. I think one's got 373,000 in the last month. The other one's on two, 270,000. I mean, just imagine if you had your channel. YouTube, just have, imagine. Stopped. YouTube have stopped cancelling videos that other people upload of me. Something's changed. I've watched that. Yeah, no. So yeah. Well, I, I haven't got my channel. So. I'm still rec my channel, I can't put things up on my YouTube channel because it's blocked, yeah? But mm. other people like yourself, they can go, they can put my videos up. And they get, I saw my Kate, I just come across some random channel and it's 160,000 views with my Katie Hopkins podcast I've done last on some random oh, person's wow. channel. There's another channel called Save the UK. There's another channel called Far Right. There's another, all these channels just mirror the videos I put out on my socials, but then they're banging on all other medias, including YouTube, which is great. And it's great that, as I always say, you're the media to other people. Take our videos freely and pump them everywhere. Take the documentaries. We've just done a campaign called Save Salwan. If you haven't seen that campaign, you can go and sign the petition very soon. I know that the Swedish embassy is in London. But I will be handing in that petition to the Swedish embassy, demanding that they review the situation of his of his refugee status because they're trying to deport this lad. He's an Iraqi from he's a, he's a, he's a, a Christian Iraqi who's gone to Sweden and he set fire to the Quran. Yeah, so what, right? Yeah. And they wanted to deport him back to Iraq, where he'll definitely be killed. So we allow rapists, terrorists, all of them to stay here under the guise of safety. But we wanted to deport someone like that. He's trying to make it. a point, wasn't he? From what I'm, from from my view of it, he's trying to make a point that we should be free in a world in 2024. Oh, what's he done? That's what my phone ringing. Oh, his phone ringing. We've come to a point where I mean, he was trying to show that you could do something like that, and now with the repercussions, are they trying to deport him for it? Hey, can you see me, Danny? I can't see you, but I can hear you. Okay, let me. Uh, shall I leave and come straight back? Yeah. Yeah, go on. And people were for asking them why I'm in I'm in the car. I've had to drop my son off at his boxing training. I wouldn't have had time to get home. So if people are wondering why I'm sat in the van, here we go. He's back. Oh my God, Daddy, you've got two thousand people live on it. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Well, the message is, listen, the message is very clear. We're trying to make sure. Did you see that? that we... Tony Robinson's disappeared just like his wife. <laughs> One of the comments under there. <laughs> it was me that disappeared, you mug. Uh, Every weekend. Yeah. 
<laughs> that doc, just quickly, because that documentary, the two tier, a lot of what people are seeing about the two tier police is very much in their their thinking patterns at the moment. When is that doc, documentary likely to be released? Um, I, don't, I don't know because the end of it will be my court case, won't it? I'm waiting for okay. the verdict. I was going to put it out okay. before, but I'm waiting for the verdict. But in the next few, next month, maybe, yeah, month, yeah, two yeah. Months. May, by May, by, by May, May. Good. Um, by May, yeah, so yeah. All right, well, listen, I know you're a busy guy. I know there's probably people who want to talk to you, but listen, just for final message about the 23rd of April, yeah? Final message. I, I, just saw, I just saw Tahir Akbel comment, Tahir Iqbal commenting under here. So I'm going to take the opportunity to say, Tahir, this is Mohammed's Quran, <laughs> number one bestseller. Yeah? My Quran is the number one bestseller, Tahir. Okay? <laughs> and what this does, if you haven't, Tahir, why don't you pick it up, yeah? Because what this will do, and if you've got any principles of morality, you'll leave Islam tomorrow once you read it and understand it. This book, so people understand, this book was banned by Amazon. You can buy Hitler's book in 20 languages, but you can't buy uh, Muhammad's Quran. Yeah? No one can refute this book because what this does, so people understand again, there's this whole argument about interpretation. We keep hearing, oh, it's been misinterpreted. There was never an argument about interpretation throughout history. Yeah, That's new. Islam and the religion of peace was never said until George W. Bush. Every previous leader, Islamic leader, our war generals, our prime ministers, spoke openly and honestly about what Islam was. It's a religion of war. That was always known as that. There's never been this confusion. The reason why we have confusion now is because Muslims are in the West. Yeah, They don't know what to do. Right. So George W. Bush told this lie, the great lie that spread around the world. And now you hear Muslims saying Islam is a religion of peace. Bullshit. Right? And this book puts the Quran in chronological order. Just so you understand, when Winston Churchill picked up the Quran, yeah, when he was growing up, when he read the Quran, because Winston Churchill made lots of comments such as Islam in a man is like rabies in a dog. Yeah, that's what he said. Right? He also said Islam has the power to bring Europe back to the Dark Ages. Muslim men believe a woman is property. Yeah, that is their property. He made so many different comments for his knowledge of Islam. Now, the reason why is because back then the Quran used to be in chronological order. That now they've got rid of every chronological ordered Quran. Yeah, now. The Quran, like any great war manual, because that's what it is, is an encrypted book. Yeah? We decode it, okay? Because what we do is we take it and put it back in the order it's meant to be in. Because the order it's meant to be in, if you understand Islam, abrogation in Islam means that whatever... So if Muhammad says one year, love the Jews, but the next year he says kill the Jews, then to understand which one matters, whatever he says later in his life supersedes what he says earlier. So when you pick up this book, and this is so that you or we can understand it, can win the debate, can win the argument, and enlighten ourselves to the danger our country is in. Yeah? So when you open up this book, there will be peaceful verses, because in Muhammad's first 10 years of his life, he was a peaceful guy. Yeah, He had no followers, 350. Right? Then he introduced j rape, jihad, war, slavery, murder, everything. Yeah? He found his winning formula, and he went and spread Islam round with a sword. He got all the criminals on board, like they're converting in the jails. He went out to the mountains, all the people who had been driven out, because they were fucked criminals and backward wrong and yeah and then he gave them the permission to go let's go conquer this village you can take all the women as sexual slaves you can take all the money you can take everything so this is what islam does and then we can convert them and that's what he done yeah so when you find peaceful verses in here like this right so this first here what we've done is every word of violence every word of, to here are you still fucking watching every word of violence yeah Every word don't of get violence, my channel taken off yeah <laughs> every word of violence is in bold capital letters yeah so this verse here has a line through it and it has a line through it because it says cancel by verse 95 so you then you can go to the back of the book you can look at the order of the book and you understand why that's cancelled out it's important we understand this anyone wants where to can you buy the book where can you buy the book yes that's what this is about daddy where i'm from <laughs> <laughs> just fucking tell them just tell them where they can buy the book <laughs> Christopher, don't give a fuck um you can get it from Mohammed's Quran. No, it's God important. God. It is important people understand. No, it. it's important we understand it. And do you know how much work went into this? Do you know the work and the time? Do you know what this is? Let me read you. Let me read you the quote on the front cover. Yeah. yeah. This is why they arrested me at the anti-Semitism march. Yeah. I believe because if I got the chance next next to Boris Johnson, right? Boris Johnson wrote. Remember what it's like. This is in two thousand and three, before he led our country. Yeah. And then pretended he doesn't doesn't know what Islam is. Like all of them do, like cowards. Oh, yeah, and they all act stuff. Oh, my granddad's a Muslim. Yeah, that's what he come out saying, yeah? Remember what it says in the Holy Quran, slay the unbelievers wherever you can find them. We will perform jihad against the kafar, the unbelievers. 
That's a quote from Boris Johnson in a book that he wrote in 2003, which he thinks he's hidden. Yeah? No one's ever pulled him up on this. Right? He, Boris Johnson is fully aware of what Islam is and the danger it poses to our country. Many of our leaders are aware. But throughout history, all of our leaders used to warn us. Through the, the, the introduction to this book, we quote the leaders of our country and what they said. We quote the military and what they said, leaders from America, from the UK, because li leaders' job is to warn the public of danger. That's what they used to do. Now they deceive us. Now they lie to us. Now they're fighting another agenda. It's not for our interest, but you can get it from MohammedsQuran.com. Go on UrbanScoop.News. You'll see the link. Go on my Twitter. You'll see the, see the link for it. And you'll be handing yeah. out free, free copies on the 23rd of April. Yeah, yeah, come on the 23rd, then it'll be there. Yeah. If it gets Sorry. cold, we'll... Um, yeah, just really quickly, George Galloway. Did you hear, did you hear that? <laughs> I want you to talk about George Galloway because it's quite important. What do you think happened there? What do you see happening in the future? What's your opinion on it? George Galloway is, Galloway is a very, a very clever man. Um, he ran a fabulous campaign. He's a wrong one, all right? He's a wrong one who would sell his ass to anyone. He sold it to every dictator going throughout history, yeah? But he's also a clever man. And... What we need to understand, all of us, is that the Muslim vote will become the power vote. He knows that, yeah? That the Labour Party are about to realise that because they're getting kicked out by all, their, by all the independents who... Any, any Labour politician that didn't vote for a ceasefire, so any Labour t politician that didn't appease the Hamas supporters, yeah, will be voted out in the next election if they, if they stood in a Muslim area because the Muslims are going to combine in a military fashion to get rid of them like they did with George Galloway. They are voting Islamists in. Now, at the minute... It's about Gaza, yeah? But as, as their demographic grows, what it will come about is unless the politician pushes what they want, and what do they want? They want oppression of women. They want a, a homosexuality to be illegal. They've got all these different conditions for their Islamic ideas, yeah? And the politicians will push them because they will gain power. There's an organisation called MEND, which, might, which Gove just named in his anti-extremism thing. He named, when he come out to find an extremism and who they need to combat, he named MEND. Now, men, I've got transcripts of one of the men speakers talking in the Conservative Party, the Liberals, and, and Labour. It doesn't matter what they call us. They will sit around tables and negotiate with us because we can control 45 seats now. We can choose who gets elected with the power of how we vote. Yeah? That's the future of our politics. They're going to use our democracy to end our democracy. Yes, we are in a limited time to stop this. And, and the sooner... And I hope that other politicians like Lee Anson or Suella Braveman, I hope that if the Tories get wiped out, they create a real populist party. And that populist party just is open and honest and not cowards and not talking about the all interpretation of Islam or Islamism. Yeah? When they talk about Islamism, I say, well, was the Prophet Muhammad an Islamist? If, if we're against Islamism, was the Prophet Muhammad an Islamist? Yes, he was. Right? So he forced his ideology through, through violence. You're, that, that's what you're saying is an, is, is an Islamist. So Muhammad was an Islamist. So let's stop talking about Islamism, right? The problem is Islam, okay? Stop creating words to make yourself feel better about criticising it and tell the truth, because the truth matters. Because that's what we're seeing on the streets. I mean, we're seeing on the streets in London every Saturday is Islamist groups holding Hamas banners, dressed as Ham in Hamas uniforms. So the 23rd of April is a day for us all to do what we Are do best. you coming on the horse, Danny? I'm coming on the horse. Coming on the horse. Right? You're coming to George, right? I'm going to go on your walk into court dressed as St. George. <laughs> Definitely, 100%. 100%. <laughs> I'm going to go to slay the judge. They can't stop you from doing it. Imagine sat down. I say it's St. George, you say you're on With the full uniform on. Yeah. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. But no, honestly, I, I know I know you're very passionate about the things that you're talking about. People obviously will, are waking up to everything. It's very important that people understand that where we are from... 30 years ago to now, it's very dangerous. And it, yeah, when we're, when we're in our 60s, 70s, it's the kids, it's our kids that are going to be faced with this. Do you think and you're going to make 60 or 70, Danny? Either of us? Yeah, I do. I'm going for it. If I do. As long as I stay away from you within certain aspects. <laughs> they told you that, you misses. <laughs> hey, I think that... Uh, I think that we shouldn't be, whilst the problem is so bad, we should be encouraged by the amount of people who are now open and awakened to it. We should be encouraged by the elections across Europe and we should be encouraged by the fact that people are aware now and the country is more ready to listen to our argument than ever before. But we are running out of time, so... Yeah. yeah. So let's so, do yeah, it. Be, be there on speed on the 23rd of April. See you then.
<laughs> right, Yax, thanks, mate. Say goodbye Hello. to him. I'll speak to you soon, and I'll see you on the 23rd. Cheers, yeah. mate. Gonna, look, you can't... There you go. He's off it. So, we went in, in a couple of directions, but you get the gist of it. It's going to be a momentous day, one that needs to happen. It's got to happen. It's got to happen for, for, for us, for our children, um, to stand in unity and unite as English men, women and children. There's the message. Be there the 23rd of April at Whitehall. There will be a stage. It starts at three o'clock, the 23rd of April at three o'clock. You can't miss it because the stage will be covered in uh, St. George's flags. And I promise you now, it will be a day just like we've had in previous years, a day that you will never, ever forget. And it will be a show of strength. We'll get Tommy on again. Um, I'll be keeping you updated about the event. But please, please make sure you make your arrangements. Take the day off work. Do it tomorrow. Tell your boss you've got to take that day off. It's important. Make your arrangements and get in your trains, buses, and I'll see you on the 23rd of April at three o'clock. See you later.